foot and mouth cleanup halted because of huge cost. Why cars in Britain are still the most expensive in Europe. Arrests after police raid anarchists in Genoa. And first Osprey here for nearly two centuries prepares to fly. From ITN, the ITV Lunchtime News with John Suchet. Good afternoon. Welcome to the programme. Later news from your area. First, the Prime Minister has ordered a clampdown on spending over the foot and mouth cleanup after he learned the full extent of the bill. Cleaning and disinfecting farms is costing £2 million a day, with each farm costing an average of more than £100,000. Here's Lawrence McGinty. Cleaning up after foot and mouth on this Cumbrian farm cost £100,000. The milking parlour was repeatedly disinfected. The floor of the cow yard, two feet of concrete, had to be dug up. All this was done not to stop the virus spreading to other farms, but months after the outbreak to stop it re-emerging when this farm is restocked. Government sources said today pausing for a few days to review costs wouldn't threaten new outbreaks. What we, the headlines this morning were about was the cost of the final uh, cleansing and disinfection prior to restocking, uh, where there do seem to be some costs out of control, and that's what the Prime Minister uh, and the headlines were addressing. The leaked report says the cost of cleaning up and disinfecting in Europe is in some cases only £10,000. In Scotland, the memo says, the average cost of disinfection is £30,000. But in England, the average estimated cost is £104,000. That's why the government wants a pause to review costs. The indications are the government uh, anticipate this review will take about two weeks. Why you need to stop when the review is going on, when this is such an important issue, I do not understand and I find unacceptable. The opposition attacked the halt in the secondary disinfection and repeated its demand for a public inquiry. Calling a moratorium on further cleaning and disinfection is one of the worst things that the government could do at this moment. And under the circumstances, our farmers and the general public are entitled to some answers. That moratorium may last only a matter of days, but once again, foot and mouth has proved a public relations nightmare for the government. Lawrence McGinty, ITN. And we go to Lauren Taylor at Westminster. So Lauren, what is the government saying is behind this? How is it defending what it's doing? Well, what the government is saying is that on farms where the clean-up and disinfection process has started, it will continue, and this halt in proceedings will only affect farms where it hasn't started. And they're saying that the, matter, the delay will only be a matter of weeks while they try to work out why there's this huge difference between the cost of cleaning up and disinfecting in Scotland and the cost of it here. Now, what they're saying is that the process does have to happen and it will go ahead. They do have to get value for money, so they're very much trying to play down the significance of this delay. Uh, what about the timing, though, of this? Well, the Tories have been quick to point out that this has just come to light uh, just after the House of Commons has broken up for the summer, so they can't then quiz ministers about it in the House. And I think it also doesn't look particularly for good for the government that it's come out in leaks and that there's been no official announcement. Uh, it certainly doesn't for, for farmers who've been very worried about all this. The other thing to note is that the government has already spent £74 million on the clean-up and disinfection process. And it seems what happened is they didn't actually set limits or guidelines before it started. And I think what happened is they simply got caught out by the cost. And one thing they are going to have to look at in this, during this delay is whether there's been any fraud going on. OK, thank you, Lauren. A new report has confirmed what most people already knew. British motorists are being ripped off when they buy a new car. A survey of more than 80 models found we're paying up to 60% more than elsewhere in Europe. Neil Connery reports. 